For Mr. Johnson, something in that scene didn't seem right. He couldn't ignore the feeling of unease that gripped him as he observed the sadness in the little girl's eyes, very different from the excitement that children usually board the train with, eager for the adventure that awaited them. Although the family tried to convey an image of normalcy, the ticket collector felt that something was amiss. He checked the boarding documents, but apparently, there was nothing wrong with them. So, he boarded all the passengers and began the journey. He simply couldn't foresee that what was to come would be something far beyond what he ever imagined possible. Embark on this thrilling story now. If you're already a fan of our channel and want to support us in creating more captivating content, please show your love by hitting the like button. Let's dive into the story. Let's get to the video. It was another night at the bustling train station of a big city. The imposing trains were parked in their designated spots, awaiting the arrival of passengers. The atmosphere was frenetic, with people moving back and forth, carrying luggage, buying snacks, and checking their departure times. Like a typical hot summer night, the air was warm, while the engines of the vehicles made the environment even hotter. Mr. Johnson, a man with over two decades of experience as a train ticket collector, was in charge of an important route that night. His love for the profession had not diminished over time. He still found joy and satisfaction in his work and in meeting people from all walks of life. The man arrived at the station in his impeccable uniform and friendly face. The other employees greeted him with respect for his continuous dedication. Good evening, Mr. Johnson, excited for the overnight journey. And as always, he replied enthusiastically, Yes, I love traveling overnight. Seeing the stars and the moon accompanying us on the journey is the most beautiful scene one can have these days, he said, smiling and brightening up the train station. He knew the night would be long, but he was prepared to face whatever challenges came his way. After all, it was his therapeutic moment to be in that place, looking at the sky illuminated by small white dots, traveling through the dark road lit only by the lights of the train, and finally, safely unloading all those people who entrusted their lives to him to their destinations. That was the satisfaction of his life, his purpose on this earth. The passengers began to gather in an orderly line, eager to board the train that would take them to the tourist city. While some carefully stowed their bags in the overhead compartment, others headed to the comfortable seats inside the vehicle. Everything was going smoothly, but at a certain moment, Mr. Johnson's attention was captured by a couple who seemed to stand out from the crowd. The young woman, around 30 years old, displayed striking and beautiful features, with curly and silky hair, showing a happy expression, although somewhat forced, as if she were trying to hide a concern. Beside him, the older man, around 50 years old, had a tense expression, as if he were alert to something unexpected, looking around. In the middle of the two, who seemed to be representing a scene, a little girl of approximately seven years old, with her hair loose and her eyes full of sadness, stared at something on the ground while clutching her stuffed animal tightly. She seemed lost in somber thoughts. The woman looked around as she moved forward in line and tried to appear lighter. She addressed the girl with words of encouragement. Cheer up, sweetheart. We're going on an amazing trip. There you can go to the beach, isn't that great? The girl remained with her head down and silent. The man, then, with a somewhat dry expression, added, That's right, and you won't cause any trouble on the trip, right? For Mr. Johnson, something in that scene didn't seem right. He couldn't ignore the feeling of unease that gripped him as he observed the sadness in the little girl's eyes, very different from the excitement that children usually board the train with, eager for the adventure that awaited them. Although the family tried to convey an image of normalcy, the ticket collector felt that something was amiss. He checked the boarding documents, but apparently, there was nothing wrong with them. So, he boarded all the passengers and began the journey. He simply couldn't foresee that what was to come would be something far beyond what he ever imagined possible. The journey began like all others, with everyone properly seated and the expectations of a smooth ride. The gentleman, with his vast experience, started the journey with confidence and with his assistant Paul by his side. The train hummed softly as the massive vehicle left the city behind and ventured along the tracks toward a tourist town. The nighttime scenery began to unfold before them as it always had, and it was the best moment for the ticket collector. The moon was majestically suspended in the sky, accompanied by a few clouds and several constellations that filled the landscape. Trees passed by the window like shadows, and only the darkness ahead, to be explored, was what delighted Mr. Johnson most about his work. The night is beautiful, isn't it, Paul? The gentleman asked with a smile. The man responded enthusiastically, absolutely stunning. And then, picking up the microphone, he continued, Well, 
I think it's time to make announcements. All right, can you inform? And an announcement echoed through the train speakers, informing passengers about the estimated travel time. After that, they would go straight to their destination since, being a journey undertaken during the early hours, although it was nearly an eight-hour journey, the route offered everyone the opportunity to sleep during the journey and wake up at the destination. While Paul wished everyone a good trip and closed the train door, something still lingered in Mr. Johnson's mind as he was somewhat lost in his thoughts in the darkness of the road. The gaze of that little girl during his assistant's brief statement still haunted him. He shared his concern with Paul, who also noticed something strange about that family, besides noticing the look of that little one who observed him in a way that also intrigued him. Yes, Mr. Johnson, you were right. The little girl seems quite sad, as if she were uncomfortable with something, Paul commented, sitting down. The truth is, I don't know, that family seemed a bit strange to me, a bit disconnected, he said, as if the girl were trying to convey an unspoken message, a silent plea for help. The experienced ticket collector couldn't ignore this uncomfortable feeling. Even though the family tried to appear normal, the sadness in the little girl's eyes deeply troubled him, and he had the intuition that something was wrong, but he couldn't identify exactly what. The gentleman sighed without a concrete answer to the questions that arose in his mind. I, I really don't know. Perhaps it's just my accumulated fatigue. After all, it's been hectic days of work. He tried to lighten the mood with a smile, as he always did to brighten up the atmosphere. Then, finally, the time came to pass through the seats and check the tickets. The place was full of passengers. The atmosphere was one of euphoria and excitement because everyone seemed eager to reach their final destination. His thoughts remained centered on the family that caught his attention from the beginning of the journey, the couple and the little girl. This was due to reflecting on the conversation he witnessed minutes earlier when he passed by them on the train. The man had said to the little girl, behave yourself, no funny business. The little one innocently replied, I really need to pee. The woman firmly reprimanded, I'll go with you to the bathroom, daughter, but don't misbehave or you'll have problems with me. The girl glanced at the ticket collector briefly as they stood up, with bright, moist eyes. However, Mr. Johnson didn't want to be invasive, so he continued to observe silently. Although he thought that perhaps they were just strict parents trying to set limits for a mischievous girl, this unease still lingered like a shadow in the back of his mind. But destiny seemed to have plotted the entire route of that night and put each piece in its place. The decisive moment came when almost all the passengers were asleep, yet the couple remained alert. The woman firmly held the girl's hand. Mr. Johnson noticed that once again the little girl asked to go to the bathroom. I'm pressed. I need to use the bathroom. Again, that's not possible. The man said, annoyed. I'm not going to let you drink water anymore. The woman also said, showing irritation. She's lying. Try to sleep. It's not possible that she's pressed again. The little one hugged her teddy bear with one arm as she seemed to want to cry. We don't want to hear crying. However, it was at that moment that the woman decided to get up quickly to take the girl to the bathroom again. As soon as the woman passed through the corridor with the girl in front of her, as they passed near the ticket collector's seat, the little girl dropped her stuffed animal on the floor, and it fell at Mr. Johnson's feet. The ticket collector was about to pick it up when the little girl just looked at him, and he immediately understood the urgency of her gaze, the panic, as if she were saying, please, help me. The mother noticed that the girl bent down to pick up the bear and became furious. You only cause trouble, don't you, Letitia? Pick up that bear and come on. She picked up her toy and moved her lips without making a sound to Mr. Johnson. Help was what the man managed to translate. His heart almost stopped, but he needed to keep calm. The little girl continued walking towards the bathroom. The girl's father didn't take his eyes off the two sitting in his place. As soon as the two returned to their seats, the ticket collector became apprehensive and commented to his colleague what had happened. Paul almost fell backward, pulled the curtain behind him, and immediately looked at the couple and the little girl, realizing that something sinister was happening inside that train. We have to do something, Mr. Johnson, the assistant murmured. Both were aware that they needed to act with discretion and caution because now they had the responsibility to protect the little girl and ensure that she was saved from those two people who claimed to be her parents. The impact of the disturbing revelation weighed heavily on Mr. Johnson and his assistant as they continued toward their destination, terrified and unsure of how to handle the dreadful situation. Their first reaction was to grab the onboard communication radio on the train to alert the authorities or ask for help. However, to their frustration, the device had no signal and simply didn't work. 
The assistant had complained countless times about the need for maintenance, but as fate seemed to have placed them in this situation, the equipment failed just when they needed it most. With the road empty and no phone to call the police, they were truly out of options. Paul, irritated by the situation, muttered quietly, radio. I've told them to fix it a million times, Mr. Johnson. Although sharing the same sentiment, he responded resignedly, they're truly irresponsible. When we need it the most, it doesn't work. Faced with this adversity, the two men began discussing the best way to help the little girl and keep them inside the train so they could be detained by the authorities once they reached the station. As they neared their destination, Paul expressed his fear, Mr. Johnson, what are we going to do? Are they dangerous? And what if they're armed? The ticket collector was pensive. I know, but we need to be cautious. The girl can't stay close to them, wherever they're taking her. We can't allow that. They urgently needed a plan, something to distract them. It was then that Mr. Johnson had an idea and shared it with his assistant. After a few minutes, he said, it might work. The man expressed with a glimmer of hope amidst the desperation. I believe it's a distraction, at least until we can get help. With the plan in place, they headed towards the destination, still determined to save the girl. Throughout the journey, Paul continued trying to contact the agents by radio and phone, but the device truly had no signal. However, they weren't willing to give up so easily. Finally, the long-awaited arrival at the destination was near. The day had already dawned, and everyone was having breakfast as the train entered the city. The assistant decided to make an announcement to the passengers. With a smile on his face, he informed, Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to announce that, in celebration of our company's anniversary, we are conducting a raffle. One of you will have the luck of winning a $1,000 voucher to be used on our trains to any destination on our train lines. We have here the names of all present passengers, and now we will announce the winner. The announcement immediately caused a stir, including to everyone's surprise, and also to the couple with the little girl. Paul continued, The winner, please stay until the end of the journey and wait for all passengers to disembark. Your prize, the voucher, will be handed to you. No need to provide any data or information, just present it at the station and enjoy. The couple exchanged looks of excitement, as they hoped to win a free trip. This would mean reducing their costs and facilitating their plans. The assistant finally revealed the name of the raffle winner. The winner is Alexander Smith, he announced. The man who was with the little girl was surprised and pleased, smiling widely as people applauded happily for the apparent good luck of the man. Some passengers commented, how lucky for him. I never win anything, while others congratulated the supposed winner. The woman accompanying him nudged her supposed husband, silencing him after the excitement subsided. She reminded, okay, okay, you got your voucher. Now, keep quiet so no one suspects anything. We just need to take the girl and finish the job. However, the assistant approached him just in time, almost catching him red-handed, and whispered, please, Mr. Smith, at the end of the journey, just wait a few minutes so we can hand you the voucher. When you want to travel, just present it to the company, and it will be accepted as your ticket. We wish you a great trip. The couple nodded in agreement, oblivious to the unfolding plan. They immediately agreed to wait for the supposed prize, without suspecting what was to come. It was all part of a plan by the ticket collector and his assistant to serve justice and save the innocent girl. As soon as the train arrived at the station, the passengers disembarked, and the couple with the little girl stayed behind, as agreed. The woman showed impatience, incessantly shaking her leg, while the man tried to calm her down. Calm down, Anna, I just need to get my voucher. Do you know how much we're going to save? We need this voucher. And why is it taking so long, huh? It's just a piece of paper, isn't it? She exclaimed. However, what happened next caught them completely off guard. The woman noticed the suspicious movement and shouted, Look, Mr. Smith, it's the police. Panic seized the couple's souls, but everything happened very quickly. Instead of the assistant with the supposed travel voucher, a team of heavily armed police officers appeared and arrested them. They boarded the train and exclaimed, hand over the girl's documents. Who are you to her? The poor little girl immediately started crying and ran behind the men. One of them took her off the train, and as soon as she saw Mr. Johnson, the poor thing ran to him and hugged him. Calm down, dear, calm down. Now, you're safe. Everything will be okay, he reassured her, embracing her and providing security as the little one cried in relief. Tears also rolled down his face upon learning that the little girl was finally safe. After the arrest, it was discovered that this couple was part of a major child abduction ring for exploitation, and an investigation was opened. 
Many other children would be saved thanks to the brave actions of the ticket collector and his assistant that day. The little girl was identified as Lydisha, a child missing for two days in the city where the train departed, the daughter of local merchants. She had been kidnapped on her way home from school, and no one knew what might have happened to her if Mr. Johnson hadn't intervened. Lydisha was finally reunited with her parents, who were emotional and relieved to have their daughter back safely. They deeply thanked both of them for their courage and determination. The heroic act of both men and Mr. Johnson's brilliant idea with the supposed travel voucher also had positive repercussions in their own lives. He received a promotion from the train company in recognition of his crucial role in saving the girl's life and apprehending the kidnappers. A safety protocol was implemented by the train company to prevent cases like this from going unnoticed, including double-checking children's documents and reporting any suspicions through an alert to the authorities. And you? If you were in the ticket collector's place, what would you have done to help the girl? When you travel, do you usually pay attention to what's happening around you? Have you ever witnessed anything that caught your attention? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you were touched by this story, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't miss out on another heartfelt video, which you can find on your screen right now. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss an update. And until the next video.